Hey everybody, it's me, Lankit. This might be a bit of an interesting video, but I feel like this is something I need to share with people. So as you guys know, I do primarily JoJo-related stuff on here, if it's not related to my personal project, such as the Wavelength Texture Pack for Spider-Man 2 on the GameCube. Uh, you can use it on Dolphin Emulator. It's out now, by the way, but... Aside from advertising my own projects, or updating you know, you guys in the future about how progress is going. I typically like to stick to JoJo related content. And it's funny because I'm only coming on one year soon since I've been a Joe bro or a JoJo fan. Right now, I can't imagine a time in my life where I wouldn't be a JoJo fan, but it hasn't even really been that long ago since I first watched and experienced Phantom Blood for the first time. It was in the right place at the very right time. I have been recommended it to hell and back since part three's anime was coming out and I was still in high school. I think I was in my third year of high school, 11th grade for those in Canada. I, I only heard about it from the memes. I was I, was, I kind of disconnected myself from it. Uh, my very first YouTube channel, I hopped on the to be continued meme trend without even knowing what it was really from. Needless to say, Jojo has always been I guess somewhat involved in my life since then, without even me realizing it. The reason I'm making this video is to inform you guys what this series actually means to me. It, it, I can safely say JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has saved my life in so many ways. But in order to understand that, we have to go back to a little over a year ago. I was just wrapping up my final semester in college. Uh, field placement, I was working my ass off like a a little bit over eight hours a day on cross lusts alpha i was also trying to balance a part-time job and a girlfriend at the time that lived in a completely different city that i would always try to make time to visit for i want to say everything started falling apart after i received the award for best game to come out in that bracket your bracket i want to say uh the whole 2021 to 2022 year from then onward, everything kind of went to shit in my life. It is a bit personal, so I'm not going to get into too much extensive detail. But me and my my mother, uh, I lived with her all my life, full time. And it wasn't until a little, uh, I want to say almost a full year now, since we've lived together. We were, we were just butting heads constantly. I never laid my hands on my mother, ever. But I did say a lot of shit. And I have this habit where if I'm upset about something, I'll just start spewing out the tr I, I don't want to say just the truth, because it's not always the truth. It's just, like, my emotions just coming out. But I suppressed a lot of shit I needed to get off my chest at the time, and it resulted in me being forced to leave the house and I should say the apartment I was forced to leave the apartment otherwise the cops would have been called on me and I would have been escorted out of the apartment and had it not been for my grandmother I would wouldn't have really anywhere else to go and I've I've been there I've been here ever since um, I am planning to move out in September but that's a completely different story all of that happened a day after I had one of the messiest breakups ever, if not the messiest. We took a break for a few weeks, and after the break, the way she would talk to me, like, I'm a very emotional individual when it comes to my personal life. So hearing her thought process and hearing why she didn't want to continue seeing me and why she thinks we should split her vocabulary and grammar it, it was essentially like on the same level as you talking to a co-worker or your boss or i or your boss speaking to you it sounded like it was overly professional and that really bothered me because like i said i'm a very emotional person with my personal life so i just had it i i let out everything to her and I was still healing from all of that because she was the longest relationship I ever had and I didn't think 
she could act so heartless. I'm not saying her breaking up with me was heartless. I'm saying in the way she did it, it was. But I digress. I was already dealing with a really bad breakup. A day later, I got forcibly removed from my apartment. And at the time, Pufferfish and I were not on great terms. It was kind of in the in the seething stage. Uh, I don't know. At the time, way, way back, like in Jan last January, 2022 January, I felt that I was just used a bit as a punching bag in terms of friendships. Like, I, I always felt like he was ragging on me for no reason. And normally I'm fine with that. But every time we talked one-on-one, -on -one, it ended up me resulted in me being a punching bag. And I, that's how I took it. And as time went on, I decided I can't take this shit anymore. And I cut him off. And I was worried that he would use or try to locate some really suspicious shit that I have said. Like, out of context it sounds suspicious, but in the context it doesn't. I was afraid he was gonna manipulate my words against me. Mainly due to the fact that he made content trying to, like, cause drama within a community. You guys probably don't know the name, but YouTuber by the name of Bonza. Um, I didn't want that kind of attention, so I did a whole clean sweep of my last YouTube channel. Which was really stupid of me, but I'm actually kind of happy it doesn't exist anymore because I, I feel like I, I could finally do that fresh restart my own way without feeling like I have to do specific things. I feel like I can now just be myself, advertise what I want, play what I want, talk about what I want without feeling like I am I need to be forced to succeed on this platform. But he released a video, two of them. One was privated. That was uh, a personalized video letter. And in that private video directed to me, he mentioned he was going to be reviewing my alpha project, the Crossless, the one that won the award. And I... Sure, I was seething at first when I watched that video, but I, I calmed down and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to just be neutral about this and be like, you know what? You're coming at me. That's whatever. Let's just, like, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Whether it's good or bad. Like, criticism is criticism. This video happens to come out the same week that relationship I mentioned prior and me being removed from the house happened. So I was at my lowest of lows after watching that video. Reason being, I felt, and I still kind of feel this way about it, but we've we've squashed our shit. Half of the video is genuine criticism. The other half is just quick jabs at me or just not understanding the creative process for the project itself. And that bothered me, but I had to take it and swallow it because if I didn't, I knew more shit would happen. So it bothered me for a while and it even made me delete everything I had at the time from the alpha on my home PC and just hit the, so like the hard reset on that. And I had no idea how to continue forward at the time. In between all of this, I started, I watched Phantom Blood and Battle Tendency, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, uh, I really liked it, and I was excited to where the series was going to go forward from there. So I started watching Stardust with Wally, uh, Wallcamophone. He was showing me the series episode by episode, and I loved every second of it. Every second of JoJo I saw, it was, I was hooked, I was hooked. It made me forget about the shit I was going through. And after all three of those events occurred, I got a full-time job. So I leave, I request my two weeks from my part-time job, and I shit you not, I requested my time, my, my leave about, I want to say, three weeks into my full-time job. The very next day, they let me go an hour before the end of my shift, claiming I violated probation, simply because... I had to miss two days on my second week because I threw my fucking back out 
doing a job there. Granted, I didn't go to any of them and report the injury. I tried to take it like a, like a man, which in hindsight, that is really fucking stupid to do. Do not ever do that. Especially if it's a work injury, do not try to pretend it's okay and then it be a long-term problem. Because I'm telling you, I could not sit up or anything. So I, I went from having two jobs to having nothing. And the only thing that kept me going was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I shit you not. I felt like I was at the bottom of the fucking pit. I felt like, you remember fucking Rock Bottom from Spongebob Squarepants? I felt like I got stuck there and I was there for a long, long time. But watching JoJo, learning from it, the different ways that you can tell a story, the creative ways you can solve problems, the characters, the music, the setting, the meaning, the endings. It kept me going. By the time I caught up to the show, Batch 2 hadn't come out yet, and I got a tattoo. I have the Joestar birthmark along my left trap muscle, around that shoulder trap area. I got that after I finally was able to get out of that rut. I, I, I look at that star on, on my left shoulder trap muscle, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I look at it, and I don't think of JoJo anymore. Not just JoJo, at least. I think Perseverance. I think of hope for a brighter future, and I think of confidence in my own work. I don't want to put out mediocre content. I wasn't even sure what video I was going to make right now, because I want to try to at least get maybe like a video in once a week or once every two weeks, at least something just to let you guys know, like, I'm not just abandoning the people that came for the fucking drunk JoJo fighting game shit, or I'm not abandoning the people that came in to see me rage at the bullshit of All-Star Battle R's online service, or the Golden Wind Enjoyers. I'm not abandoning you. I just have been really busy. I've been preoccupied doing a lot of shit. And I want to make sure that I am making content, not because the numbers are there, but I want to make sure I'm making the content because I feel like I want to make the content. And I know it's not always a good thing to wait so long to upload something to YouTube. But that's the whole point. I don't care if the video is successful, as long as I believe it's a fucking banger. And if I think you guys will fucking like it, then I'll make it and I'll put it out. I, having a schedule is just the bonus for that. If I can have an actual consistent schedule where I'm, where I feel I'm putting out banger after banger after banger, I will. I will do that. If I feel I have the time and I can commit to that, I will fucking do that. Anyways, I'm going to end this rant, discussion, fuck, whatever you want to call it. I hope you guys uh, understood something from that. I don't. I don't know. I, if you did enjoy this, I appreciate that a lot. And if you made it to the end, I appreciate you listening. I do plan on doing the Phantom Blood video game if I can find an English translation. Of course, I won't be playing Golden Wind ever again. Don't ask me to. I won't. <laughs> the game fucking sucks.